In this video, I wanted to show the 10 most common DIY electrical mistakes that I've seen. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll throw in a bonus tip, number 11. Okay, so without further ado, let's dive right in. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is backstabbing the outlet. Now, even though they provide these connections for you, I do not like to use these. A few years ago, I was called over to a friend of mine's house to look at a plug that didn't work. And when I took the plug out of the wall to investigate what happened, well, the wire was barbecued all up inside the box. And well, I was able to fix it, but I came to the conclusion that this creates a high resistance connection over time and a high resistance connection will generate heat. Okay, so after I saw that, I don't use this anymore. So instead, I like to loop the wire like this and put it around the screw like this on this style of outlet, okay? All right, so number one brings me into number two. There is actually a time where you want the wire coming out of the back of the outlet. This one is a commercial style outlet that uses clamps instead of just the screws like the previous one I showed you. You don't want to loop the wires and loop the wires around the screws like the previous example. Instead, you do want to use these clamps, okay? So remember, the hot wire, go the black, goes to your gold screws. Now you're going to want to use the strip gauge that's right here on the back of the outlet so that you have a guideline of how far to strip that back. And you do want to put that in the clamp and tighten it down. And then your neutral goes to the silver screws. And then, of course, your ground goes to the green screw. If you're finding any value in this video, please click that like button below and subscribe to this channel. I come out with videos like this as often as I can. All right, so moving on to number three. Now, I've seen this one before, lots, okay? It's not pushing enough wire into the box. Now, this is short, okay? What you need is at least six inches from the back of the box, okay? If you, as you can see here, we barely have four inches. Now, what I like to do is just a, a fast and easy way to do this is I'll take my cutters, which I've measured them, they're about seven and a half inches long, and I'll take them and stick them towards the back of the box like this and mark it with my thumb and then cut it like so, and that's usually about right every time. Short wires coming out of the box make it very difficult to hook up your outlet or switch. It makes it difficult for somebody down the road when they're working on this. All right, so number four is just another joyous situation that I've seen before, is you'll have not only the wires are too short, but the sheathing will barely be stripped back enough to get the wires into the back of the outlet like this. You'll have all this sheathing in here, and that makes it really hard to fold all that up and get it back in there. Okay, so it, and you'll usually have the ground stretched out like this, you know, where there's just barely any room for anything. So instead of doing it this way, this is the way to do it. You'll want to start with the proper amount of wire in the box, as I showed you before. And just take your knife and you're going to want to leave at least a quarter inch to half to even three quarters of an inch of sheathing inside the box instead of so much sheathing and just peel that right down the middle try to keep your hand behind the knife so you don't wind up jumping off of there and going right into your hand and then just peel that puppy like a banana just like so just like that you want to reach up there and cut that jacket off of there all right so number five is one that i've seen before and is a potentially dangerous situation you don't have to staple the wires like Clark W. Griswold hanging up Christmas lights. If you don't know what that means, I'll refer you to Christmas Vacation. I'll give you an example. I've seen this. It's in there and it's like crimping the wire with a grip of, you know, who knows what. This will damage the wire possibly down the road. It could result in a short and a fire, so you obviously don't want that. Instead, let me show you how to do it. All right, so I've got my staple started. That staple only needs to be tight enough so that it's just barely touching the wire. That's all it needs. It doesn't need to grip the wire so that it's not, you can't pull it out of there no matter what you do. All right, so tip number six is another potentially dangerous situation. It's using the wrong size wire for the wrong size breaker. Let me show you what I'm talking about. 
Let's say hypothetically we have a number 12 wire coming into the box right here from a 20 amp breaker at the fuse panel. So far so good, right? Well the problem is, is say you don't have a long enough 12 gauge wire to run to the next plug. So instead, oh I've got some 14, I'll just use that and I'll run this over to the next plug. Well this 14 gauge wire is only rated for 15 amps, so that's going to be a problem on your 20 amp breaker. Don't do this. If you're getting an inspection and the inspector sees this, he'll fail you and make you fix it. All right, so you want to keep the wire the same. Now, if the opposite were true and you were using a 15 amp breaker with the number 12 wire, that would be okay since your number 12 wire is rated for 20 amps, so you got plenty of uh, capacity left on that wire, okay? All right, so number seven is going to be an easy one. Don't hook your loops up backwards on your screw terminals. Let me show you what I mean. This is an example of backwards. The loop goes in the direction of the screw. To tighten the screw, we turn this to the right, okay? Well, the way that that loop is, when we tighten the screw, it's going to have a tendency to push that loop out, okay? Well, this one's not doing it, but I have seen it before. Believe me, it does it. So instead, obviously, you want the loop. Yeah, it did open it up. Instead, you want the loop to go in the direction of the screw, like so. And then when you tighten it up, it will tighten the loop and not loosen the loop. All right, tip number eight is an easy one. Don't mix the line and the load on your GFCI outlet. All right, here's line, here's load. Now, if you want to think of load, think of a truck. A truck carries a load somewhere, so this load is going somewhere. That's going to the next outlet. The line is your input, your voltage input, so you can easily check that with a non-contact voltage sensor like this, okay? When you turn this thing on, it will go off when you've got line voltage there, so you'll want to have your line separated like this. You don't want to do this while it's hooked up, because if your GFI outlet is engaged, it's going to go off in both positions. So you want to disconnect it, make sure your lines are separated, and when the voltage sensor goes off, that's your line voltage. There's obviously no power here, but just say that one's the line voltage that it'll go off, then you make sure you separate these, and that's your line. Now if you're doing this without the power and you're trying to figure out line and load, it's best to wait until you can turn the power back on so that you can just do the test I just showed you right here, okay? All right, so number nine is another one that I can't tell you how many times I've seen before, is you'll have a metal gang box, or say a pot light, you know, a can light, or in this case, a bathroom fan, it doesn't matter, it's a metal box is what I'm trying to show you, and you'll have a wire running right through the hole, just like so. At least this one does have some kind of a, you know, a rolled edge on it, but that's just this one. Usually they don't. It's usually just raw metal. And it's going right through and it's hooked up inside and that's how they've got it. And I'm like, what did they do that for? So don't do that, okay? Use a plastic connector like so. This is a good example. Of course, I've got that backwards. This one goes from the inside like that, all right? Or you can use one of these Romex style connectors with the nut like this and tighten the nut on the inside, and then that will be a good option too, okay? So just, you've got a clamp hole down here, the plastic one has a clamp hole down. Don't run your wires through there, just like I just showed you right there, it's just not a good practice. All right, so number 10 is a very simple one. Don't daisy chain multiple GFI outlets together. You only just need to hook up one at the beginning of the run, and then the subsequent outlets downstream will automatically be GFI protected as well. All right, so here's tip number 11, the bonus tip. Now this one should be obvious, but sometimes it's just not obvious. Don't leave junction boxes hidden inside of a wall or someplace you can't access it. Drywall isn't meant to be a cover-up board to cover up mistakes, so don't do that. And even worse, don't leave a junction not even inside of a box, just wire nuts, and it's just hanging, just, what? Don't do that, okay? So I hope this video has been helpful for you. Thanks for watching.